Hey guys and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning tutorial on a priori. When you go grocery shopping, we often have a standard list of things to buy. Each shopper has a distinctive list depending on one's needs and preferences. A housewife might buy healthy ingredients for a family dinner, while a bachelor might buy beer and chips. Understanding these buying patterns can help to increase sales in several ways such that if there is a pair of items that are bought frequently together like bread and milk for example. When you go to a store, would you not want the aisles to be in order in such a manner that reduces your efforts to buy things? For example, I would want a toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash and other dental products on a single aisle. This is done in a way in which we find associations between items. Both X and Y products can be placed on the same shelf so that buyers of one item would be promoted to buy the other. Promotional discounts could be applied to just one out of the two items. Advertisements on X could be targeted to buyers who purchase Y, and X and Y could be combined into a new product such as having Y in flavors of X. While we may know that certain items are frequently bought together, the question is, how do we uncover these associations? Please subscribe and click that bell icon to join our notification squad. In order to understand the concept better, let's take a simple dataset, let's call it the coffee dataset, consisting of a few hypothetical transactions. We'll try to understand this in simple English. The coffee dataset consists of the items purchased from a retail store. The association rules. For this dataset, we can write the following association rules. Rule 1. If milk is purchased, then sugar is also purchased. Rule 2. If sugar is purchased, then milk is also purchased. Rule 3. If milk and sugar are purchased, then coffee powder is also purchased in 60% of the transactions. Generally, association rules are written in an if-then format. We can also use the term antecedent for if, left-hand side, and consequent for then, right-hand side. From the above rules, we understand the following explicitly. Whenever milk is purchased, sugar is also purchased or vice versa. If milk and sugar are purchased, then the coffee powder is also purchased. For example, if we see milk as a set with one item and coffee as a set with one item, we will use this to find sets with two items in the dataset such as milk and coffee. And then later we will see which products are purchased with both of these in our basket. Therefore now we will search for suitable right inside or consequent. So if someone buys coffee with milk, we will represent it as coffee to milk where coffee becomes the left hand side and milk the right hand side. When we use these to explore more K item sets, we might find that coffee and milk to tea, which means that people who buy coffee and milk have a possibility of buying tea as well. An item set is a mathematical set of products in grocery aisle, milk, eggs, vegetables, liquor aisle, liquor, red blush wine, bottled beer, soda, eatery aisle, herbs, tropical fruits, roll buns, fruit juices, jams, and breakfast aisle, cereal, yogurt, rice, good. The a priori algorithm is a classical algorithm in data mining that we can use for these sorts of applications, i.e. recommender engines. So it is used for mining frequent item sets and relevant association rules. It is devised to operate on a database containing a lot of transactions, for instance, items bought by customers in a store. It is very important for effective market basket analysis and it helps the customers in purchasing their items with more ease, which increases the sales of the market. It has also been used in the field of healthcare for detection of adverse drug reactions. A key concept in a priori is to assume that all subsets of a frequent item set must be frequent, and similarly, for any infrequent item sets, all its supersets must be infrequent too. Let's take another easy example from the supermarket sphere. The example that we are considering is quite small and in practical situations, datasets contains millions and billions of transactions. The set of item set I, which contains onions, burgers, potatoes, milk and beer, and a dataset consisting of 6 transactions. Each transaction is a tuple of zeros and ones where zero represents the absence of an item and one the presence. So far so good? An example for the rule in the scenario would be onion and potato to burger which means that if onion and potatoes are bought, customers also buy a burger. There are multiple rules possible from even a small dataset, so in order to select the interesting ones, we use constraints on various measures of interest and significance. 
We will look at some of these useful measures such as support, confidence, lift and conviction. The support of an item set X is the proportion of transaction in the database in which the item X appears. It signifies the popularity of an item set. So support of X equals the number of transactions in which X appears over the total number of transactions. In our example, the support of onions equals 4 over 6, which equals 0 0.6667. If the sales of a particular item or product is a certain proportion having a meaningful effect on profits, that proportion can be considered as a support threshold. Furthermore, we can identify item sets that have support values beyond this threshold as significant item sets. Confidence Confidence of a rule is defined as follows. So confidence of x to y equals the support of x union y over support of x. It signifies the likelihood of item y being purchased when item x is purchased. So for the rule, onions with potatoes and what's the likelihood of burgers being bought. So I'm sure by now you're sensing some Bayesian theory along these lines. You would be correct if you interpreted this as conditional probability i.e. the probability of finding the item sets y in the transactions given the transactions already contain x. It can give some important insights, but it also has a major drawback. It only takes into account the popularity of the item set x and not the popularity of y. If y is equally popular as x, then there is a higher probability that the transactions containing x will also contain y, thus increasing confidence. To overcome this drawback, there is another measure called lift. The lift of a rule is defined as the lift of x to y, which equals the support of x union y, over the support of x multiplied by the support of y. This signifies the likelihood of an item y being purchased when item x is purchased, while taking into account the popularity of y. In our example, if the value of the lift is greater than 1, it means that the item set y is likely to be bought with item set x while the value with less than 1 implies that an item set Y is unlikely to be bought if the item set X is bought. Conviction The conviction of a rule can be defined as conviction of X to Y equals 1 minus the support of Y divided by 1 minus confidence of X to Y. For this rule, a burger is bought given that we have onions and potatoes, so the conviction value of 1.32 means that the rule onions and potatoes to burgers would be incorrect 32% more if the association between X and Y was an accidental chance. Let us now look at an intuitive explanation of the algorithm with the help of an example we used earlier. Before beginning the process, let us set the support threshold to 50%, meaning that those items are significant for which the support is more than 50%. So step 1. We create a frequency table of all the items that occur in all the transactions based on our dataset. So for our case, we can see that onions we have a frequency of 4, potatoes 5, burgers 4, milk 4, and beer 2. Step 2. We know that only those elements are significant for which the support is greater than or equal to the support threshold. Here the support threshold is 50%, hence only these items are significant which occur in more than 3 transactions and such items are onions, potatoes, burgers, and milk. Step 3 The next step is to make all the possible pairs of the significant items, keeping in mind that order doesn't matter, which means that AB is the same as BA. To do this, take the first item and pair it with all the others such as onions and potatoes, onions and burgers, onions and milk. Similarly, considering the second item and pair it with preceding items which means potatoes and burgers, and potatoes and milk. We are only considering the preceding items because potatoes and onions, which is the same as onions and potatoes, already exist. So all the pairs in our example are onions, potatoes, onions, burgers, onions, milk, potatoes and burgers, potatoes and milk, and burgers and milk. We essentially calculate the combinations of the pairs and we land up with six pairs. Step four. We will now calculate the occurrences of each pair in all the transactions. Step 5. Again, only those significant item sets which cross the support threshold are passed through. These are onions, potatoes, onions, burgers, potatoes, burgers, and 
potatoes and milk. Step 6. Now let's say we would like to look for a set with 3 items that are purchased together. We will use these items as found in step 5 and create a set of 3 items. To create a set of 3 items, another rule called self join is required. It says that from the item pairs onions, potatoes, onions, burgers, potatoes, burgers, and potatoes, milk, we look for pairs with the identical first letter, and so we get onions, potatoes, and onions, burgers. This gives onions, potatoes, and burgers. And then we have potatoes, burgers, and potatoes, and milk. And this gives potatoes, burgers, and milk. Next, we find the frequency for these two item sets. And then we get 3 for onions, potatoes, and burgers, and 2 for potatoes, burgers, and milk. So applying the threshold rule again, we find that onions, potatoes, and burgers is the only significant item set. Therefore, the set of 3 items that was purchased most frequently is onions, potatoes, and burgers. So as you can see, the algorithm is quite simple, right? Here you can see a visualization to summarize the steps we took in our example earlier. We first tally up our items from our dataset, then we eliminate items that are below the support threshold. Thereafter, we pay up our items and repeat the process for the pairs. The same goes for three item item sets. Depending on the size of our dataset, we can see how many items and transactions we have, and then you can go beyond four item item sets to compute using the a priori algorithm. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of the a priori algorithm. So first of all, it is an easy to implement and easy to understand algorithm. It can be used on large item sets and is easy parallelized. Taking a look at the cons, so sometimes it may need to find a large number of candidate rules, which can be computationally expensive. Calculating support is also expensive because it has to go through the entire dataset. Okay, so that is it from me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Click that bell icon to see more machine learning tutorials. And please support us on Patreon, link in the description below. If you'd like to download the script to the video, please click the link down below also and download it for free. Stay tuned to the next lecture where we'll see how we can implement an a priori algorithm in Python. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next lecture.